Uh, finally, I want to give one more reason why it's important to know where the charges are in a molecule. I want to give another example of why it's so important to know where the charges are in a molecule and how the, molecule, how the charges are spread out. Um, so over here we drew two resonance structures for acetate. And here I've drawn the structure of the F oxide anion. So here's another anion. You can see this is a different anion than acetate um, over here because this only has one oxygen. Now remember that in organic chemistry what we'd like to do is look at a picture of a molecule or an ion and try to predict how it's going to react or if it's going to react. So let's compare say the acetate and uh, the ethoxide here. So where would these be likely to react? Well both of them would be likely to react at the oxygen because that's where the charge is. Again whoever has the charge is the reactive element. So here this oxygen has a negative charge, and over here you can see there's some negative charge on this oxygen and on this oxygen. So in both cases we would expect the oxygen atoms to be reactive. But which of these two species would be more reactive? Um, would we expect um, to get uh, a quicker um, reaction from this ethoxide over here or from the acetate? Well, which, um, basically, whoever's more reactive is whoever is less happy or less stable with the, uh, the way they are right now. Now, we know that both of these have charges, but which of these are happier with their charges? Well, in this picture, this whole negative charge is concentrated on this one oxygen. Whereas for acetate, we do have one resonance structure where there's a negative charge on the oxygen, but we have another resonance structure where there's no negative charge on the oxygen. So overall, we know that there's not really a full negative on this oxygen. We know that the true, char the true charge is a kind of average of these two pictures. So there's about maybe half of a negative charge on that oxygen. Well, that means that this oxygen is going to be much happier and much less reactive than the oxygen in ethoxide. So if we're trying to predict who's going to be more likely to go through um, a reaction, we would predict that this ethoxide with a full negative charge on the oxygen is going to be much more reactive um, than this acetate, where there's only about half a negative charge on the oxygen. So once again, it was crucial to see where the charges were in the resonance structures. Um, if you only look at this resonance structure, it looks like this oxygen has a full negative charge, but then when you draw this resonance structure, if you draw the charges accurately, you can see that actually um, there's much less than a full negative charge on the oxygen. Um, and again, that shows that it would be pointless to draw the resonance structures if you didn't get the charges right. The whole point of drawing the resonance structures is to see how the charges are distributed. Another way that this is important in this example is, who do you think it's easier to make? Is it easier to make an acetate anion, or is it easier to make an ethoxide anion? Which of those is easier to make? Well, neither of them is going to be super easy because they both have charges. Again, nature doesn't like making things with charges. Um, but this really has more charge on the oxygen. Here we have a full negative charge on this oxygen, whereas in this picture we can see the negative charge is actually spread out between two oxygens. Well, the more we can spread the charge out, um, the easier it is to be, is, the easier it's going to be to make the charge, the happier that charge is going to be. A charge that's concentrated is unhappy, and a charge that's spread out um, is going to be less unhappy. So it's going to be much easier to make an acetate anion than to make an ethoxide anion. Again, if you only looked at this picture, it would seem like it's going to be very hard to make acetate because it looks like we're putting a full negative charge on this oxygen. But then if you draw this other resonance structure, you can see there's another resonance structure where there's no negative charge on this oxygen. And the negative charge here has been spread out to this oxygen. So once you've drawn the two resonance structures, you can see that the charges in acetate are much happier and easier to form than the charges in uh, than the charge in ethoxide. And again, one more time, this proves how pointless it would be to draw the resonance structures if you didn't get the charges right. The charges are the whole reason for drawing the resonance structures. If we didn't get the charges right here, we wouldn't be able to pick up on all the valuable lessons from these structures. Okay, so all of what I've been talking about so far is really just an introduction to resonance structures. I wanted to give you a kind of introduction into what resonance means and why resonance is important. And one of the very important things I wanted to do here was to um, impress upon you that the most important part of drawing the resonance structures is getting the charges right. And I'm really emphasizing that because that's, in my experience, that's one of students' biggest mistakes. 
Very often, a student will treat the charges like an afterthought, or even if they don't get the charges right, they'll say, well, I did pretty good. Uh, but if you get everything right except the charges, you totally screwed up. The whole reason for drawing the resonance structure is to see where the charges are gonna be, because that will then allow us to figure out um, which atoms in the molecule um, are going to be reactive and how they're likely to react.